Now it oh, is. yeah, I am. There we go. I can leave the meeting or I can continue. Good. There we go. Those are Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello. This is Hi there. Hi from the American University in Cairo. And I've got some people with me today who are going to try this uh, technique called Troika Consulting, which is a liberating structure. And um, I want to talk about how you can use it for community building in your classes. So I'll explain quickly what it is and how I would go about explaining it to students. It uses breakout rooms. You're putting students in groups of three in breakout rooms. So what I would normally say, you know, if you want to know the liberating structures, there's a large group of structures that help uh, create, you know, equitable and engaging and energizing and very quick conversations, even though you have large groups that create, you know, produce useful results usually. Um, and Troika Consulting is one of them. Because we're going to be doing breakout rooms, you know, you don't want people to get worried if the host gets kicked out, just wait and come back in. Let people know that if they find themselves alone in a breakout room, not to worry, or if something goes wrong, they can just leave the breakout room, come back to the host. And there's also an ask for help button if they need to use it for Zoom. I'm sure other softwares have similar functionalities. Um, so the tro Troika is, means three in Russian, and it's to help you get practical imaginative help from colleagues immediately. So these can be anyone. It's not that you need um, an expert to consult with, but just anyone. And I think for our students, it can be an opportunity for them to get help from each other. So you're sort of building community for students to help them learn to learn from each other and not need uh, an expert every time they have a problem. Because sometimes students don't naturally do that, especially if they're a freshman, they don't know a lot of people, that kind of thing. And so the steps are like this. Um, one of the people in the threesome uh, explains a problem. They're the client and they take like a minute to explain a problem or challenge they're facing. The others take one or two minutes to ask clarifying questions. And then the person who's the client turns their back and listens while the others discuss the problem for four or five minutes. And that person, in, if, if this was in real life, they would turn their back. But in Zoom or in online, you would just turn the video off and mute as if you're not there, but you're listening while the others talk about your problem without interrupting them at all. And then after the five minutes are up, the client turns back and debriefs um, on what they found useful. So what we would tell students is, you could tell them ahead of time to prepare this if you like, or you could do another activity like the spiral journal to get them thinking about what kind of challenges are on their minds. And you know, we want them to think alone for a minute. What is your challenge? What would you like help with? And think about, you know, take notes of that so that they can explain it to someone else in a very short time, like one minute. And then we do, normally, you would do three rounds of this, right? Each person would have a challenge to share and the other two would consult on that challenge. Um, but honestly, for, for this video, we're just gonna do it for one person because just for time, but you can imagine what would happen, the reciprocity of each person uh, doing it for themselves. Um, and so all of them helping each other. There isn't a power difference of, oh, well, this person got help and the other ones didn't. It's like everyone helping everyone, right? Uh, and so what I would tell people is take a picture of these instructions or I can give them the slides so that they can keep them so that they know how much time is dedicated to each step. Um, but also, obviously after you finish all of your students doing this in their own groups of three, they can all come back to the main room and share out either orally or in a Google Doc, like a challenge and some of the solutions they came up with or things like that. Um, the other thing um, that I wanna say is that the facilitator or the host can keep broadcasting reminders of when it's time to move on to the next thing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have my phone with a timer on, um, but obviously if you're in breakout rooms, Zoom actually has the timer on for you. So you wouldn't, might not need to use your phone so much. So I'm gonna put a timer on for nine minutes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as if I'm sending Mia, Ken and Autumn to a breakout room, Mia is gonna pose a challenge for um, Ken and Autumn to ask clarifying questions about and then consult about. Okay, are you guys ready? Do you guys have any questions? Yes, yes, I even took a screenshot I'm ready. of the slide. Great, awesome. So I'm gonna mute now and um, ask Mia to start and I will start uh, just sending you notes in the text chat um, about, okay. And I'm going to stop the screen share as well. Uh, so I'll send notes in the text chat when it's time to move okay. on to the next thing. All right, go Mia, you have a minute to explain your problem. Okay, so um, this was a timely um, moment because I just received an email. Um, I want to get some advice 
about a particular kind of challenge in starting a new semester and having a, um, like a varied audience of students. So some students, so the context I'm, I'd like to describe my context. Basically, I'm teaching graduate students um, and I'm teaching the introduction to the field course. And in essence, um, everything is new to them. But some of these students have an established understanding of online learning and have, um, you know, considerable experience in that realm, while others are coming back to school after being away for some time and have never in their lifetime done any kind of like real online, even in a hybrid mode, learning. And they're expressing in their recent emails um, their anxiety around that. Like, where do I go? What do I do? What are the expectations? Oh, the fall semester um, with uh, radically different uh, experiences regarding learning online. How do I manage that from the get-go? Great, great question. Topical question. Okay, so uh, you're muted up bottom. Right now it's clarifying questions. So I'm, I'm thinking um, we're still here with you. Um, are these most likely a lot of students that, well, it was obvious that they didn't know each other. So there was, um, is there kind of a cohort of ones that kind of know each other and have been going through the degree program together? That's a great question, Ken. Um, basically, there are some that know each other. There is one particular course in which everyone is new, but have varying um, backgrounds in terms of the online learning experience. But then there are there's other courses where there are some in the cohort that are brand new and others who are well established and have studied with me online in the past. Right. So those are That's two different, exactly. So it's like two different classes but the one that I'm um, most concerned about is where everyone is new, but right. there's a variety of different understandings as to what might happen because um, a variety of different backgrounds. Okay. How many students total, Mia? Um, in the one course that I just mentioned, the one with everyone new, it'll be 18 students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other one while well, we got you? The other one um, would be 25 students. And okay. in that group, I'd say it's probably around 70% um, of them have studied with me in the, um, in the pandemic time and know sort of uh, all the like ebb and flow and my style right. of teaching. But the others okay. are entirely new to both the program and the course. Okay, good. So Mia's muted up. It's Autumn and I. Ha, huh. so I kind of had this issue. I, I, I'm not solving it yet, but I had this issue in the summer where I was teaching summer for the first time and we have a national class. So it's all online and almost none of the students knew each other and they're all from different cities. They're different, like different contexts completely. Um, I don't know how to, I could have solved it that summer, but one thing I'm attacking this semester is I spent a lot of time in that first week really building up trust with my students. I thought that was so important to do this semester that I failed on in the in the summer that that's the main thing I'm thinking about is, is how to find time to build up trust with me because they're new to me as well mm -hmm. as trust for each other and being with able to turn other. on the camera and not be scared about sharing. Mm -hmm. I think I need, I would, if I were in that position, which, and I, I guess to some degree, we are all in that position. When I'm mm -hmm. thinking about this problem in multiple contexts, the first thing that comes to mind for me is getting to know the students. And it gets back to that word that you just used, Ken, that word trust, right? And it's really hard to establish trust in an environment where you don't know the person and where the person doesn't know you. So I would focus on instructor presence and making yourself known and making my students know that they can trust me and that I'm not going to pull the rug out from under them, let them know what my teaching philosophy is. Then I'd also try to get into some way of getting um, them to open up with me. And I might do that in the beginning with some type of anonymous 
-hmm. way for them to give me information or maybe not anonymous, but at least where they know it's just me. So right. confidential, I guess, is a better word than anonymous. So they, I could That's do that through point. email. I could do that through a survey. There's lots of different ways that I could do that. Related to that, Michelle uh, Pekansky Brock a few weeks ago, because it was the week before I started, shared out about her writing on uh, liquid syllabus. And I think the key there hmm. and that I wanted to jump on was contacting all my students and having a easily to find information about the course and about Mia and everything else that they didn't have to go into the LMS to get there because they probably don't even know how to get into the LMS and they're confused and there's all that. So Michelle's talked a lot about this and I really loved um, those ideas and I tried to do that except I didn't have my list of students until a couple of days before the semester started. <laughs> that was another issue but I love that idea that she writes a lot about. That you can't really get to know your students if you really don't know who your students are. Right? You don't even have a list of them. Oh, that's harsh. But but I thought it was really important because she said make sure it's in a you know easily visible place on a web page, the static place or Google Sites or something that they don't have to go into the LMS because a lot of their stress is getting yeah. into that LMS. Right. And I thought it was really important to try to contact them a week before. Some of them might not see it. Mom, some of them might not do it. But a lot of students are all kind of anxious and, and Mia yeah. used that word anxiety before the semester starts and if we, right. if we slam them with this information on the first day of classes they're getting it from all directions and right. it's kind of overloaded I think. And, and I think there's just something that you need to do with um, establishing that communication with them and letting them know like I'm not going to ding you because yeah. you can't get into the LMS. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. We're going to get you That's into the point. LMS, right? Like this is about your learning about this thing that we're, and we're don't all panic. going through this. Yeah, yeah, don't panic. If your internet's gone, yeah, a lot of people have been talking about this, about please be forgiving when their internet's not working and everything else. Yeah. Um, just assume, you know, they're, they're trying and, and even be, I think, um, Mike, uh, uh, Mike Bosch uh, talked about this the other day and I, I wanted to be very specific about, I wanna make sure students are finding time to relax and, and being mm. really clear about my outlines for them. Cause I saw a schedule that included basically every day, but Saturday um, of what you're doing each week. And I'm like, we should be really, you know, direct about telling our students they need to find time to relax too and disconnect. So. I, oh, I, I love that. Modeling I that I think is really important. Oh, and I we've been it. all stressing with that. So yeah. Hey, Mia. Like actually build it in. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mia, come back. So uh, I'm back. <laughs> that was so wonderful to listen to. There's so many gems in what you said. Um, I'm just going to take a glean a few of the things that really popped for me. First of all, Ken, you know, kicking it off with the emphasis on trust and development of like a foundation of trust. To me, um, it's really a, a wonderful reminder of how to start off, build a foundation where people feel um, a kind of signal, a signaling of an environment of trust. And then, um, Autumn, I loved how you said, uh, if I, I want get to know them, know your students. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, mm -hmm. that's yeah. so important. But what was really golden in all of that is when Autumn said, that means um, sharing who you are with them. And I, I really like that um, had had me thinking about all kinds of things I could do to support that kind of um, culture from the very beginning, which includes on some level, um, sh maybe even a video or like a, a pre kind of thing. And that's where like Ken's idea from Michelle came in. I'm I'm time. Time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My phone timer went on and Hoda's like, timer, timer, timer. <laughs> That's a great, great question and a great problem. And we're all, we're all living that meal. Yeah. So, so we can all go back and watch that, the content of that later. And Mia can tell you guys later all the other things that she found really useful about it. But the point is that even with the very limited time, uh, I think you guys managed to give her a lot of really useful tips. I think the the time for us was really good that it was five minutes. It didn't it didn't feel too rushed like the two minute exercise we did the other day with the kind of show and share. Five minutes was nice and long, but not too long. It was Goldilocks. <laughs> not too hot, not too cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I like that. Uh, what about like, can you imagine like how students might might like benefit from that opportunity to do that? I, I think they would need to like watch this recording. I think they need right. to see it modeled. And I, I've been pushing so much that we need to model for our students. They don't right. know how. Right. That's why we're doing these videos. Is that faculty right. also? don't necessarily know how to imagine something like that when you read it on the website. I've known about liberty structures for a really long time, but until I tried them a lot, uh, and, right. and also to try it in a safe environment where it's okay to make the mistake. But one of the things that I like about this one is because the time is short, there's no very high expectation that you're gonna give an amazing consult. Like it's okay if the consultation doesn't result in something incredible, but if it results in something slightly useful, that's that's good too. And, and I mm -hmm. think I think it's useful for students' own self-efficacy to believe that they can help another person oh, without yeah. any particular expertise. Mm -hmm. And then for it to go round where all three of them get a chance to do that for each other, for the same three people. So and I've heard this before, rules. Maha, where, where I've been really encouraging a, a community of learning mm -hmm. with my students. And I and I had this Swedish girl who she was her videos were awesome, but she'd say, I would like talk to other students and, and you know what they actually have good ideas it was like this concept that you could hear something from your colleagues instead of just your teachers sometimes it's surprising yeah. to yeah. students i'm actually doing this with faculty and telling them go do this in your department meetings don't always come to the center for learning and teaching yes. like figure it out and then if you still can't figure it out you can come to us Lovely. Go ahead, what i love about this uh exercise is that uh focus on listening and that um, it actually makes time for listening. Like so many exercises mm. are really focused on putting stuff out there, but this one really gives time for that. And I also love that it utilizes the ability to turn on and off the camera, that you can actually, turning the camera off is part of the exercise. I love and we're that. We're taking I affordance of the that. technology and it's wonderful. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think you were specific in, in Mia's debrief that we were supposed to be quiet, but I, I think it probably was important for us to, to let her mm -hmm. talk and not interrupt. Well, I mean, she only has one minute. Like if you're going right. to interrupt for one minute, you're But there's people that person. are good, <laughs> like me right now, interrupting you. Um, there's people no, that are good fine. at not interrupting, right? Yeah, I, I'm actually one of the people who are not very good at not interrupting, which is why the liberating structures are really important All for me, because they structure me to not do that. <laughs> Um, just really love Autumn's point, though, that listening is modeled within this exercise. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also paired with um, visualization or like with like a kind of withdrawal into the listening self, which doesn't have a visual component to it. it it's sort of a more veiled, but also active. And I really like that part of this whole exercise. Right. I did like that. I have to experience the other side of turning the camera off and just listening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, normally you would have that experience. So that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Like you try the different roles. Um, and then going back to the main room, if students have done this three rounds, uh, what would you do to sort of see what they've learned? Would you ask them to share out some of what they've learned? Would you ask them to just type it in a Google Doc? What would you, or would you ask them to just reflect about it on their blog? There are also many different things you can do with it. Do you, do you, can you think of anything else that you'd want students to do afterwards? Or just keep it confidential? You could do that too. Like what I think it would be all of the above. <laughs> yes. All those ideas were good. <laughs> but I think one thing that, that is kind of nice, it also comes from like your traditional think, pair, share, is when the group together decides what their golden nugget to give to the rest of the community oh, is the on some yeah. level. Yeah. So I like that. So let those three spend time together deciding what to share back. Oh, that's yeah. a great idea. And that also makes sure that there isn't anything like confidential that gets shared out. Because I did a Troika once within a department meeting where I asked about a very personal problem. So I would not have liked anyone to talk about it outside of the right. trio. Um, so that's a great point because yeah, that's great. And especially if you ask them a question like at the beginning of the semester about like how they're dealing with the pandemic or um, how they're handling on their online learning, like what kind of challenges they have. I'm sure that everyone chooses one challenge, but everyone has like five or six. And so <laughs> across the groups and within each group, a lot of people will have um, similar that are issues. Similar. Yeah. Is there anything Definitely. that you feel might make a student uncomfortable or I think the one thing I'm thinking is letting them prepare mm. their challenge and give them yes. time to think of that. I, I think it's important to yes. do that. Mm. 
And I, I would that say would be also my have concern. two different challenges in mind because I realized with a lot of these liberating structures with complete strangers, um, yes. if I end up in a breakout room with someone I kind of know, I might do something different. And the other thing is sometimes if I end up with a man, I react differently than if I end up with a woman. Oh, sure. So, Definitely. Yeah. So Thank you for I saying about she can't see the chat on mobile, Autumn, by the way. We always forget that. Those of us that you are You can't see the chat on mobile. mobile. We're you rarely on mobile and Zoom and we you forget don't, that. You have to actively move to yeah, but, but it's, No, but it appears for you. But you got to go look at it. It's not Yeah, you got to go look like at it, it for but us I think you see... Maybe she's not even looking. I don't know if she's looking at it. Oh, yeah, can I'm you not, see the chat? But, but thank you for the now reminder. Now I just realized that it's there. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. I didn't. Yep. Autumn knows. No, no worries. No worries. The timing was mainly for them anyway. So what I no, was doing it's, just it's so a nice people reminder are watching. For us teaching. Right. That, that if someone's on mobile, they may not have the same experience. Not just It's the not chat, the same. It's not as no. as relevant. It doesn't come up like the same way. It's it's really mm -hmm. easy. I'll just say it like that. It's really easy to not see the chat when you're on mobile. It's not right. as easy when you're on a desktop right. or a laptop, right? Like it's right. it's more in your face. The chat is more yeah. in your face when you're on yeah. those platforms. But you can close it. Yeah. On, on, the, you can. on the desktop and then forget but about it. But I think it's important to remember that as yeah, for yeah, my own is. classes. And things. also that, and then also like on the laptop, you can see gallery view up to 25 or 40 people, but on the phone, it's mm -hmm. like three or four yep. max. Exactly. Yeah. That's another thing that's also important as a teacher or as a student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, zoom I did tips. want to say one more thing. Yeah. Extra zoom tips. <laughs> is there anything else that I wanted to say? Um, yeah, the, it'd be the trick, like uh, kicking it back into gear to do the next round, I guess, because we're not experiencing that. And if there's any kind of tricks oh, so, so there are transitioning two ways you to the could next. do it, right? You could bring them all back to the main room to make sure that they've stopped, because, you know, Mia doesn't stop at one minute, of course. And most people won't easily stop at one minute. And you don't want to take over from the time of the next people. But then yeah. the bringing them back in itself takes up time. Yeah. So you sort of want to trust them to just move on to the next without, mm -hmm. uh, by just sending those. I was sending you notes in the chat, the pop -up but, alerts. Are, but you would get the pop-up broadcast alerts on Zoom, right? But yeah, you with have the to remind rooms. them to look at them, right? Yeah. Because sometimes they won't be looking at them. Well, yeah, they get excited and they're doing it and that's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think the, all of these just sort of need students to get into the habit of not taking up a lot of time. And that's why that activity that we call mad tea, we're going to change its name because some people said this is a very ableist term to use the word mad. So we call it oh. wild, wild networking or something like that. But anyway, that activity, because it asks you to take two minutes, one minute each to answer a question, sort of get into the mode of being concise and making right. room for another person. So as a, as a warm up activity, it gets you into that mode so that when you get into an activity like this one, then you've sort of gotten into the habit of managing your time and mm -hmm. your, your talk time and listening. Um, and then you're able to listen for a longer time. Yeah, I might try this tomorrow in my session. Oh, let me know how it goes. I, I did the, the, the tea party um, in yeah. all of my groups last week. Did it work well? I think so. I need to talk to some more students Practice. about what they thought. Yeah, it's possible that very introverted students or people who, like some people might not like it. I've never heard someone tell me they didn't like it. I've heard a lot of people say they did like it, but that doesn't mean that people who didn't like it, it's possible that they just didn't speak up, right? That's what I'm always worried about. Ken, I muted you because there was noise in the background. It sounded Spanish, so it must have been you. Yeah, it's my son here as well. It's the sharing a room for two places. Yeah. Um, the group I'm doing tomorrow will most likely, they're more likely to be direct with me and honest about how is it going because mm -hmm. a lot of them have taken three or four classes with me. Right, that's good. Uh, and like if you don't have that kind of relationship with them, maybe what Autumn said earlier, either anonymous or confidential feedback. So I would actually go for actual anonymous where I don't know who's saying it um, so that they can say if they don't like something without fear of upsetting me when I still don't know them. Because at the very beginning, like towards the end, I think they're okay with critiquing oh, it's real. my face because they know it's okay, but not at the beginning. I try very No, the fear early. is real. Yeah, and I try very early to help them question my authority comfortably. But uh, but yeah, I, if I wanted critical feedback at the beginning, I'd do it anonymously. Um, okay. And then later on, maybe when, once they get used to you, they'll know that it's okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording.
Does anyone want to add anything else before I stop? That was great. Thanks. Okay. That was awesome.